Hey guys, packet lesson 4-3 day 2 polar coordinates. Again, I'm assuming you're watching the pre-lessons. If you haven't done so, hit stop on this one and go watch that pre-lesson. It will help you understand what in the world this is even about. And I actually did example 6 on the pre-lesson. And so I'm going to skip that one and jump right to example 7. So, Again, look at what we have. We have polar and we want rectangular. That means we don't want R's and we don't want thetas. And we don't want trig functions. Think of it that way too. We want only X's and Y's. And we're going to manipulate these formulas and a little bit of algebra and a little bit of trig to make this happen. So, I'm just going to just say... If this is not sine or cosine, you're going to have to get rid of it. And the only way you can get rid of it mathematically is by dividing. You'll get in the habit of doing that, I hope. So you divide both sides by it, if it's not sine or cosine, and things just seem to work out. So these cancel, and I get R equals. Now you have to ignore the 3 for a second. But what's 1? Let's imagine there's a 1 here. What's 1 over secant? In other words... If I flip secant, what's the reciprocal of secant? Well, that'd be cosine. So, I'm going to just go ahead and say this equals 3 cosine theta, because that's what 1 over secant is. All right, well, this says convert the polar equation to rectangular. You see, I'm still in polar form here, and here's how your brain has to operate. Notice. If I have r sine, excuse me, r cosine, then I can substitute that in for x, or I can substitute x in for that. So if I just say, hey, I want to multiply this by r, and think about this mathematically. If I multiply that side by r, I multiply this side by r, and a couple of really good things happen. r times r just gives me r squared. Now, I could put this R on the end, I could put it in the middle, and I could put it in the front. But remember, I want R cosine to jump out at me. So I am purposely going to put it right in there. I'm going to sandwich it right in there. And this is what's supposed to jump out at me. And so is this. What's R squared? R squared is X squared plus Y squared. And what is this? Well, that equals X. And now you have a rectangular form of an equation. Again, takes some practice. Um, you know, I've been doing this for years and years and years, and I still have to kind of think my way through it and be creative with these and just make it happen. But you see a pattern after you've done a few, some certain stri uh, strategies that just pop up. So without further ado, notice this was secant, so I divided by it. In the pre-lesson, this was cosecant, so I divided by it. And then I thought of this as 1 over cosecant, which turned into sine. See here, I already have what I need. I like cosine. That can be part of my um, situation. I don't need to divide by it. If I did, that would be creating a secant over here. I don't want that. So what I do need, it sure would be nice if there was an R. Again, forget about the negative 4. Think about your formulas. You have R cosine. So put one there. Well, you can't just put one there. You have to do it mathematically. So I'm going to multiply this side by R. But then i got to multiply this side by R. See, this side just kind of works out because that turns into R squared. And this one turns into negative 4R cosine theta. What's R squared? Well, that's X squared plus Y squared. Just look up at your three formulas given to you. And I'm going to take this piece out and think, what is that? Well, that's equal to x. So that's negative 4x. Very similar to this one. But I didn't have to divide by anything to get started because I already had cosine. Okay, well, this one's very similar to that one. There's just more stuff. Wouldn't it be nice if there was an r right there? So I'd have r cosine. Wouldn't it be nice if there was an r right there? So I'd have r sine. And then, look at, if I multiply that side, I'll get r squared, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply that by r. I'm going to multiply that by r, but I'm going to put it like that purposely. And I'm going to multiply that by r. 
Now, what do I do with that? Well, remember what you don't want. You don't want r's, and you don't want these trig functions. So we're going to substitute. What's r squared? x squared plus y squared. What is r cosine? r cosine is x. So I got 4x minus, what's r sine? Well, that's y. And I'm done. And there you have it. Hopefully you're kind of getting the idea after watching a few of those. Now we have to think uh, kind of in reverse. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to take a second and write these down because if these things are not staring at us in our faces, it's just going to make things a little bit more difficult. So this says convert the rectangular, notice we only have x's and y's, x's and y's, x's and y's all over the place, to polar. That means we need to introduce r somehow and theta somehow, and we got to have r equals some stuff. I know that's very generic, but that's kind of the plan of attack. Well, start right away. What's x? It's r cosine. Just simple substitution equals 5. Now, again, this is your big clue. you got to solve for r. All right, well, that means I have to divide by cosine, divide by cosine, and I get r equals 5 over cosine. Now, as a young mathematician, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. You're like, I just did a lot of good work, and you did. The question is, is this considered simplest form? Now, Let's go real basic. Two-fourths. If you put that down as an answer, you know you can reduce it to one-half. And you should. This is similar to this. Because what is, and I'm just going to insert a little invisible one here. What's 1 over cosine? Well, that's secant. So I'm going to write this as r equals 5 secant. See, this is not wrong. It's just one step away from the simplest version of the answer. And this is what you're going to find in your answer. In your answers. Okay. Very similar. There's just more stuff. What's x? Well, that's r cosine theta. What's y? That's r sine theta. I'm just looking up here and here. Equals 2. There's nothing to do over there. Again, what's our goal? Solve for r. Well, you notice there's an r here and an r here. This is just basic algebra 101. I'm not trying to make you feel stupid, but you just have to see it. Because that's the only way we're going to solve for r equals 2. By the way, I did this one in my pre-lesson. I just forgot about it. So now I have to divide by 3 cosine. Now i got to go like this. So those cancel. And I do the same thing over here. And this one is such a mess, there's nothing to simplify. So my final answer is r equals 2 over 3 cosine theta plus 4 sine theta. And that's done. All right. Let's keep going. Well, here's the deal, you guys. When you have a binomial squared, uh, let me give you a little, 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 little math reminder. 3 plus 2 squared. If you try to go like this, just square this, 9. Just square this, 4. You're going to get the wrong answer every time. How do I know this is the wrong answer? Well, what's 3 plus 2? 5. What's 5 squared? It's 25. So, you mean you can't just square these things individually? No, you guys are thinking of this stuff. You know, if you had this, then you, you square that, you square that, you get x to the fourth, y to the fourth. This right here, do not square this and square this and think you're out of the woods. No, if you square a binomial, you have to square the binomial. Now you have to FOIL. y squared minus 2y. Whoops. I just, I just went outside and inside in one step. I hope you followed that. Plus 1 plus x squared equals 1. Now, look at these 1's right here. Let's clean it up. So we get x squared plus y squared minus 2y equals 0. See, we did all that just to make it look a little more simplified, but then things should start jumping out at you. For example, x squared plus y squared is something you need to be on the hunt for. Because what does that equal? Well, it equals r squared. See, we're converting it from rectangular to polar. So that was a good move right there. Now, what is y equal to? r sine. So it's minus r sine 
theta. Now something extremely unique happens. Remember, you're not done until you say r equals some stuff. Notice how we took an r out from this one just because it works out mathematically to factor that r out. Very similar. I have r squared and an r. I'm going to take an r out. I'm going to be left with I'm going to be left with r minus sine theta equals zero. Now something very very unique happens. What is r? r is a representation of the length of the radius. So if you went back to your basic algebra 101 and you said, hey, what could r equal here? r could equal zero. If I plugged in zero here and I plugged in zero here, I'd get a true sentence. Problem is, you can't have a radius with zero. So it's like that thing remarkably disappears. So I'm left with r minus sine theta equals zero. If I add sine to both sides, I get r equals sine theta. Done. I've solved for r. So you're saying this thing equals that thing? Yep. How bizarre is that? All right, now we just got more work to do. So this is x minus 1 times x minus 1 plus y plus 4, y plus 4 equals 17. Now I'm going to do FOIL a little bit in my head. x squared outside inside, negative 2x plus 1. Now uh, y squared, and I get uh, 4y plus 4y, that's 8y. And then I get 16 equals 17. Now, I need you guys to really focus on something. These are made by mathematicians who want life to work out a little easier. So look at what's 1 plus 16. Well, that's 17. Can I just cancel those out if I just subtract 17 from both sides? And remember this little pink guy over here? I said you need to be on the hunt for x squared plus y squared. I'm going to take these two fuse them together, think of it as x squared plus y squared, and then I'm going to think, wait a minute, what does that equal? It equals r squared. Now I'm going to deal with this, minus 2, what's x? x is r, it's up here, I'll show it, it's r cosine theta, see that's what x equals. And then i got to go plus 8y, <clears throat> what's y? r sine theta. Now, what a mess, but don't forget, why'd we take an r out here? Because we want to solve for r. Why'd we take an r out here? Well, because we can, and we want to solve for r. This is kind of, it's disguised, difficult, because it's all, it's got that trig stuff, but don't let it overwhelm you. This has an r, this has an r, this has an r. Get in the habit of that, so you get r minus 2 cosine theta, plus 8 sine theta equals 0. Again, if you've got this little lonely r out here, that means r could equal 0, which is a mathematical, ge geometrical impossibility to have a radius of 0. So this thing just remarkably, very uniquely, doesn't happen very often, just disappears. So really, I need to concentrate on only this portion of it. And so to solve for r, I'm going to add 2 cosine theta. I'm going to subtract 8 sine theta. And I'm going to do that to this side, and I'm going to do that to this side. So I get r is 2 cosine theta minus 8 sine theta. And there it is. Done. So if I was to graph this, it would be a circle. If I was to graph this, it would be a circle. Crazy. All right. There you go. Good luck on your assignment.